you are about to watch a video demonstration of changing the fan in a TiVo Romeo or TiVo Romeo OTA. The tools needed for this installation are a Torx T8, a Torx T10, a Torx T15, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and needle nose pliers. Welcome. At Wheatney's, we sell a replacement fan for the base model TiVo Romeo and TiVo Romeo OTA. This is the four tuner version of the TiVo Romeo. Because this fan has a more complicated installation than fans for other TiVos, we decided that we would give you a video of how we do here. So this is a TiVo Romeo four cable. And the first step is gonna be flip the unit over and we need to remove the cable card and the cable card assembly. So this door holds your cable card, take that off. Then you're gonna slide that cable card toward the back, pull it out. Then there are four small Phillips head screws. You need like a Phillips size zero or smaller to get those out. You wanna be pretty careful with these screws. They, um, they could get stripped just like anything this size. So we're using a pretty small Phillips head screwdriver. And definitely in there nice and tight. So you can see the screw it's just got a little bit of threading right on the end. So once you get those four screws out, there's a large connector right where the cable card makes contact with the TiVo. And at that large connector, uh, basically you want to just pull straight up. It's, I don't know how many pins, maybe 50 pins connect into the motherboard. So we got a bit of a tough screw there. Okay. So then right at this part of the cable card, there's that connector under there. So we're just going to pull basically straight up on that piece. Could use potentially a flathead screwdriver under there to wedge it off if you want. Anyway, it comes straight up and off, and there's the connector and there are the pins. Just make sure you don't bend those pins. This is most definitely not a replaceable part. Okay, so then we're going to move those parts out of the way, and we're going to flip the unit over. Start with the next unit now. Okay. And on the unit, once it's upright, basically at the back, you're gonna remove three items. First one is the lid screw, and that is uh, pretty much in the center, right over the eSATA port. That is a Torx T8 screw. And that is the only screw here that uses that Torx T8 driver. Then there's another small screw that looks a lot like it, right over your HDMI port. And there you'll use a Torx T10 driver. We're using our powered one just to make it to make it all happen a little bit faster here. And then finally, there's a nut on the cable antenna coax input. And that nut needs to come off. Best way is just loosen it a little bit with some needle nose pliers. You might also have a wrench that fits it, but all it needs is like a, a turn with the needle nose pliers. And then the rest you can do with your fingers. So once that comes off, and it does need to come all the way off and be removed, there's also a little washer right behind it. That washer needs to come off of there also. And obviously, save all these parts. Once you have the washer off, uh, the next step is to get the lid off the unit. So to do that, you basically put your hands on either side towards the back, use your thumbs in the middle about where that lid screw came out, pry that part up a little bit, and it kind of bows up, and then the side should come in and just kind of flip it off. It should come off pretty easily. All right, set your lid aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the three cables that are attached to the motherboard right here in the center. There are other cables. We don't need to disconnect those. So we'll pull off the SATA cable. These all come straight up and out. We'll pull off the drive power cable, again, straight up, and we'll pull off the fan cable. At this point, you could fish that fan cable through its little harness there just to get it disconnected since we're taking the fan out completely. All right, then we're gonna get three screws out of the motherboard. 
These are Torx T10 screws. Again, we're using our power driver. But there's one here. Probably you won't have a power driver for these, but they just take a sec. There's one there. And the last one is right under where those cables are that you just disconnected. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, it can sometimes help pick these up from tight spots. Next step is to slide the motherboard forward, and you might have to slide the motherboard edge up just over the front of the case a tiny bit, but you're trying to free that back coax connector from the back of the unit, which we did here. Once it's out like that, we'll flip it over and just lay it on the table right there, and we will not disconnect these other wires, just no need to at this point. Okay, now we have access to all four of the fan screws. Now these fan screws are actually Torx T15. These are the only Torx T15 screws you'll need to work on today. Well, we're gonna use our power driver again to take those four screws out. Once those four screws are out, your fan comes out. Now, we're ready to install the replacement fan. Two notes on the placement of the replacement fan. There is a label on the fan. That label needs to point towards the motherboard and not towards the hard drive. Second note is that the cable that comes out of the fan housing needs to point towards the back of the machine. So if you see that there, it's very close to the bottom, but it's on the side that points toward the back. Make sure that's oriented properly. Slide it back into place there. Your four holes should match up over here and then you'll replace those four Torx T15 screws. Once those are in securely, it's time to flip the motherboard back over. And the important part here is first to watch those cables that you removed, make sure they're above the motherboard, and then to watch that F connector, that coax connector on the back, slide that into the hole there. And once it's in, the front should basically come down into place. You'll see your holes kind of line up there. Looks like all three are good. And then you'll replace the three Torx T10 screws. Okay, next step is to reconnect these three cables that we unplugged from the motherboard. First one's the SATA cable, and the SATA cable goes in with a nice snap. Only goes in one way. Next one is the drive power cable. Again, only goes in one way. Doesn't really have a nice snap, but you'll know when it's in. And then the fan cable. Don't forget to thread it through that little collar, that little plastic holder there. Then that plugs back down to its two pins. Again, only goes one way. Then we'll check to make sure that these wires here from the motherboard to the uh, front display are tucked nicely and it's time to put the lid back on. The lid has a little plastic tab that's gonna go under this metal tab here. So that metal tab in front is the guide to where we're gonna align the lid. Okay, so let's get that plastic tab aligned under the metal tab. And once that's centered, basically just rotate it on down and it should snap into place. There's a, basically a snap in every corner. Okay, you're basically pretty close here. We've got to replace three parts on the back. The first one is that nut and washer that go over the coax connector. So washer first, obviously. And then the nut. And the nut should just be a little bit more than finger tight. Once you get it finger tight, give it maybe a half a rotation with your pliers or your wrench. Next screw is the Torx T10 screw that goes over the HDMI port. And finally, that one Torx T8 screw that goes over the eSATA port that holds the lid on, right over there. So the only remaining item to in reinstall now is the cable card connector. And again, if you have a Romeo OTA, you don't have this cable card connector, you're done. If you have the regular Romeo, you need to reinstall this. So we'll flip the unit back over, and we've got the space where we had our cable card installed. We're gonna bring the parts back over. 
Now just a note here, when you took those screws out, there were two different types of screws. Some screws have threading all the way up and some screws have a shaft that's solid and then threads at the end. The screws with the shafts that are solid and the threads at the end go towards the front of the unit and towards the part of the cable card connector that actually communicates to the motherboard. So gently and carefully take your cable card bracket and get it aligned correctly. There's a metal flange at the front of the connector that actually fits into these two plastic guides at the front of the connector on the motherboard. So watching that, it should be pretty easy to line up. Once you get that in the right place, a little thumb pressure should snap down. And you'll also be able to tell right under the edges of the back, there are a couple little plastic pins that fit into plastic, uh, into holes in the metal. Once that's in place, go ahead and get your screws. And again, those front screws are the ones that have a solid portion and just threading at the tips. And this is with your very small Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, once you've got all four screws in nice and firmly, don't forget to put your cable card itself back in there. Basically just put it down flush, slide it in, it'll snap in place nicely. And then put the door back on, it should sit down flush, and you're all set. Fans are available at Wheatneys.com fans. And of course, we have everything else you could possibly want for your TiVo.